Okay, buddy, so my intention in this video is to talk about how you could do a definite integral like this that has a higher power of cosine or sine, okay? So like this one, uh, bounds of integration, 0 to pi over 2, and then it's cosine to the 11th power. Now, you would, in principle, do that problem like you would do this one, okay? In, in another video, I've talked about how you would handle like a odd power of sine or cosine, okay? So I'll run through the solution real quick. You might even like, you know, pause this and, and see that you could do this one and check it against my answer that I'll eventually show you. But I thought I'd run through this one because the way you would do this one is in principle the same as how you would do that one, all right? At least in principle. So we borrow one away from that and we get a four and a one. And this eventually becomes the du part of an eventual u substitution. Uh, but in order for that to be du, the u would have to be some manner of cosine, right? Okay, so we need to turn this into cosine. So we say, well, we want a sine squared out of that because sine squared has an identity to turn it into one minus cosine squared. So we get one minus cosine squared quantity to the second power, and we do a little bit of algebra, right? And now we have it right here to the point that we can do some u substitution. Let u be cosine of two theta, and that makes du negative two sine two theta. And we do a little rearrangement to make the u substitution fit up there. Okay. I realize I forgot something. So d theta, d theta, d theta. Yes, sine 2 theta, d theta. Okay, that's going to be du over negative 2. We make the substitution. We use a basic form of integration from there. And then we get our answer. Okay. So that's how you would do something with an odd power of sine or cosine. It, it just turns out to be u substitution. You have to use the identities in the right way to make that happen, but that's still what it is. Now, all right, what about this one though? Okay, that's an odd power, and I, like I said, in principle, I would handle that one the same as the one I just showed you. So I could borrow one away from that 11, and that would give me a 10 and a one cosine of the 10th power times cosine of the first power. And I might think that's eventually going to be the du, but I need to turn this into sine somehow. So I separate 10 and 2, 2 and 5, and cosine squared will be 1 minus sine squared. And then I have 1 minus sine squared to the fifth power. So yes, that will eventually be part of the du when you make the u substitution. But this is a lot of algebra. I think we can all agree about that. And if we're at the stage in math where we're doing math on paper, we're learning how to do things with paper and pencil and maybe a basic calculator, then this is a lot of algebra, all right? I know that there are integral calculators that will do the whole thing for you, and that's fine for someday, but at, at this point, you're learning how to do things from the ground up, all right? So, yes, if we're just going to do this with paper and pencil and maybe a scientific calculator, then that is going to be a lot of work, okay? So, the question I want to pose from here is, since that's, that's going to be a lot of work on paper to do, to expand that, is there another way? Okay, so yeah, there is another way. There's another way that we could handle this one that is tremendously easier than what this would be, okay? So I think if you're doing the homework or looking at the lesson, you might see this reference to Wallace's formula. And that is, uh, there's, there's lots of formulas that would fall under this description, but there's, there are two that fit the kind of problem I was just showing you. Like if you had a definite integral, bounds of integration over zero to pi over two, and you had some power of cosine, okay? So it turns out whether you had cosine to some power in or sine to some power in, by symmetry, those would be equal. 
And what the ultimate result of these definite integrals are just depends on whether that original power was even or odd, okay? And it's fairly easy, I mean, really, I mean, compared to doing this the long way, very easy to construct the ultimate answer, you know, with just a little bit of multiplication, you know, 1 times 3 times 5 consecutively up to the power n minus 1, 1 less than whatever the original power is over 2 times 4 times 6. You see a pattern there all the way up multiplied to n, which is the original power. So you'll uh, decide whether you're starting with an even power or odd power, and those are the formulas that we could use for this one. Okay? So well, let's try it this way. I mean, it's, these formulas are out there, and it's, it's still just a paper and pencil method. Okay? There's lots of formulas in math, and uh, uh, to me this is fair game. We're doing math with just paper and pencil at this point. So the definite integral from 0 to pi over 2 cosine to the 11th power theta d theta. Well, all right. That is an odd power. So I need to go 2, 4, 6 evenly. 2, 4, 6, 8 up to 10. And 1, 3, 5 consecutive odd numbers multiply up to, what was the original power? 11. So that's what you see here. And I did some canceling, like the 6 right there. I could cancel with the 3, it would leave me a 2. And uh, the 10, I can cancel with the 5, and it would leave me a 2. So I got that, and then I, I put all that together. 256 over 693. That's what you get, all right? It's very easy to do it that way. All right, so now you know what Wallace's formulas are, at least in the context of the problem that I wanted to show you. Now, okay, so that's not hard to show you, and that's pretty easy to do if you have those formulas. Uh, but do you still want to learn more? No? Okay, well, I'll, I'm just kidding. All right, so I am just going to show you more anyway, whether you want to see it or not. You're free to stop the video, of course. But what if, you know, Wallace's formula, this is almost too easy. So, so what if you are stuck, like, working this out on paper? Okay, so remember, paper pencil, basic calculator. Do you have any other options? Well, there is something called Pascal's Triangle, which tells you how you can expand a binomial, like a plus b to the second or third or fourth or fifth power. And that's kind of what we're faced right here. Here was that original problem I showed you, and we got it to this point, and I said, well, that's going to be a lot of algebra to actually multiply 1 minus sine squared times itself five times. I mean, that's a lot of work. All right. Well, Pascal's triangle gives us a formula for expanding a binomial. All right. So, well, this is a little bit smaller than I wanted it to be to show you in the video, but you find Pascal's triangle anywhere if you have an internet connection. And here's the one that we'll use. All right. So Pascal's triangle gives you the coefficients of the binomial expansion. And you can definitely see a pattern with the powers, all right, as you go from left to right in the expansion. So it saves us all the work of actually having to multiply a plus b times itself five times. So let's consider doing it that way. If I use Pascal's triangle here, I'll get this, okay. And then, like, that might be a lot of stuff. Like, there's a lot of stuff there. That's just the way it is. But it wasn't hard to get it using Pascal's triangle. And then it's a really easy U substitution. I mean, U is sine. And then the DU is cosine. It's like it, it fits perfectly just the way it is. So I make the U substitution. I get like this. And that's an easy form of integration where I get that. All right. Okay, now notice when I made the substitution, I dropped the bounds. I decided I wouldn't change the bounds with the new variable u, so I just dropped the bounds. Uh, but when I put u back in terms of the original variable theta, I'm adding the bounds back in. Okay, so this one, not too bad. Sine of pi over 2 is going to be 1 and sine of zero is going to be zero. So you're just gonna get the coefficients there. 
which if you combine, add and subtract all those together, you'll get 256 over 693. That's the same answer that we got when we used Wallace's formula. So, all right, if you're going to use paper, pencil, scientific calculator, and perhaps some other formulas, those are the ways that I think that you could handle something like a high power of sine or cosine like that, okay? All right, now, so try to do it both ways. That would be my urging. I can't, I can't make you do it both ways, I don't think. As far as the test goes, uh, I want to see some work. I want to see you uh, write on your paper what formula that you're going to use and include the details. Uh, don't just put the answer. Show me what you intended to do. Show me how you do it and show me the numbers along the way.